It is time to start working on the next piece, which is going to be a sugar jar. And then the top part should stick out of the pot. So I will make a little hole on the side of the pot. Here we go. <laughs> Hi hi, welcome back to a new day in the studio. Today we're going to do a lot of trimming. All of the balls that I threw yesterday are ready to be trimmed and I also need to finish up the sugar pots. So I have to trim the bottoms of those and I have to put them open to make them into actual pots with lids. Which is going to be a little bit scary but I think it will be just fine. And also, good news, the plates are finally coming off the bats. They've been drying for I think 3 or 4 days now. So that's a little bit longer than I expected them to take to dry. But as I said, it's quite cold in the Netherlands, so that's why it is probably taking so long. And a part of them is already off of the bed, and another part is kind of coming, becoming looser. But I will just wait till they fully come off themselves. But yeah, it's just a lot of stripping today, so that's gonna be fun. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Here's a closer look to how I like to trim my pieces. I've already shown this before in videos, but I thought I'd explain it one more time. <laughs> and maybe you're new here, so if you are, hi, welcome. But what I do is I take a small trimming tool. I like to start off with a small trimming tool because then I have less friction with the clay and it's easier for me to hold my hand still. And I first go over the bottom a few times to get rid of any unevenness because sometimes the bottom is a little bit uneven from cutting it from the bat. But I easily get rid of that by just going over it once or twice with this small trimming tool. And then I cut away some excess clay from the sides here. As you can see because it's always a little bit thick from throwing it but I prefer to just cut this away with trimming instead of cutting it away while throwing because I throw quite thin and otherwise the piece might collapse. So I just slowly trim this away with the trimming tool and then what I like to do is go over it again with this bigger trimming tool. This just makes it easier to make one flowing shape and get rid of small lines from the smaller trimming tool. And then I also like to make a foot ring and I do that by just cutting away some clay from the bottom. And then I also go over it with a bigger trimming tool to just make it nice, flat and smooth. And then I smooth the whole piece out and I first do this by going over it with a wet sponge. This gets rid of any small lines. And then what's maybe a little bit weird and I haven't seen anyone else do but it does work for me is I go over it with this trimming tool. This trimming tool doesn't really trim because it isn't sharp but this helps me to get rid of the slip from the sponge. And this smooths it out even more so I just take away the slip like this. And then what I like to do is go over it with my finger to smooth it out even more. And then the trimming part is done. And as you can see the bottom is nice and smooth. And just like that I trimmed all of the balls that I threw in the previous video. And then it's finally time to trim the plates. What I do to trim the plates is turn around these little hands, like these little holders from the giving grip, I don't know what they're called. I just turn them around so that they are a little bit flatter because a plate is quite flat and that's just how it works. <laughs> Trimming a plate can be a little bit of a struggle because they're so flat and then it's quite difficult to trim the side. As you can see here, I just put it in the giving grip like this and I just trim as far down as I can. You also have different methods of doing this, but I feel like the giving grip is just the safest way to trim something because you can also use a mat or something to put it on but sometimes the piece flies off so I prefer to just do it in my given grip and then trimming the bottom kind of works the same. The bottom is already even because I didn't cut them off the bed but I waited before they came off themselves. That's also why the clay is a little bit drier. As you can see I don't really get long pieces of clay from it but the clay kind of breaks into smaller pieces and that's just because it's a little bit drier than I normally trim. I'm not a big fan of trimming something when it's this dry but I didn't really have another choice because cutting a plate off a bed is really a struggle <laughs> so I didn't really want to do that. But as you can see I first use a small trimming tool to just make a little foot ring and cut out some clay and then I go over it with this bigger trimming tool to make it nice and flat and cut out a little bit more clay. I threw the plates quite thin so I don't cut away too much. If you throw your plates a little bit thicker you might want to cut away a bit more clay. I just prefer to make them thin when throwing them. And then the trimming is basically done so it's actually not that complicated because you don't really have to like adjust the shape or anything because it's just a flat plate. And then I smooth it out by going over it with a sponge and then you have a trimmed and finished plate and this one is also ready to try. I just finished trimming all of the plates, at least I was able to trim six of them because the other four that I threw a day later are still stuck to the beds. So I think I will be able to trim them tomorrow if I have time tomorrow because tomorrow I'm also taking some time off so I won't be in the studio that much. But for now I'm going to do the scariest thing that I have to do today which is cutting open the sugar jars. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a little bit stressful because it has to go well in one go and if I mess up then it is just ruined and I have to make a new one. First I have to decide at what 
height I want to put it open because like the lower I put it the smaller the pot will be and the larger the lid will be but the thing is that normally I just make a pot and I just make it the way that I like it I mean I'm also going to do that now but now I have the challenge to put a spoon in it that sticks out from the outside through a hole so I also have to make that hole but I think I will just make that after putting it open but it has to fit in a way that it can like stick out to the sides but it shouldn't be sticking out too high I think because otherwise the pot is a little bit too small and then I won't be able to like scoop it because when you scoop some sugar out of it then you have to hold the spoon quite horizontally so I think I'm going to make it quite low and make the lid quite big because I think that will work the best <laughs> but we'll see after I put it open if I did it right I guess okay so here we go as you can see I'm holding a little knife and I'm just slowly pressing it into the clay and what's important here is that you keep your hands diagonally because if you hold it horizontally the lid will kind of fall off and if you hold it vertically 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 then the lid will fall into the pot and we also don't want that so I'm holding it diagonally okay diagonally yes <laughs> so as you can see I just slowly pressed into the clay and slowly turned the wheel and then at the end I turned the wheel even slower because then sometimes the lid is like already open on one side and not on the other side and then you don't want to spin too hard otherwise the lid might fly off but luckily it all went well so I moved over to the next pot that I made I by the way threw these in the previous video so if you want to see me throw them then definitely check out that video and with this one I'm just doing the exact same thing so I slowly press the knife into the clay and cut off the lid and I'm very happy it went well because it's easy to like mess up here and if you mess up you can't really go back so yeah happy it went well <laughs> And then what I always like to do is smooth out the edges because as you can see it has quite some sharp edges from cutting the clay. So I just easily get rid of this by just going over it with a sponge and I just, yeah, as you can see just go over it. It's not that difficult, doesn't take that much time, but it does make the piece look a lot nicer. And I also got the same sharp edges on the pot itself, so since it was already on the wheel I just like to smooth this out by just spinning the wheel and holding the sponge against it. And then it's time for the next little bit of a scary part. Uh, I've never done this before with a pot with a lid, but I need to make a little hole in it so that the spoon can stick out of the side and be placed inside the pot, if that makes sense. So I took a look at the different sizes of hole makers that I have, and I kind of want to make a smaller hole, but the spoon was a little bit too wide. So I had to go for this size, but in the end I think it will look nice. And then I start making the hole. Making the hole is also not that complicated, but you just don't want to mess this up. So what I do is I hold the lid with my left hand because we don't want to to move while we're making the hole and then I slowly press the hole maker into the clay while I twist it and as you can see it went quite well and here I'm placing the spoon inside the pot for the first time and I think it looks really nice and I'm happy with the size of the pots that I made because I think it fits perfectly with the size of the spoon because I did want it to stick out a little bit but also not too much and then because I made the hole the size of the hole also had sharp edges again so I just easily rounded and smoothed this out a little bit by going over it with a sponge again not that complicated but important to do in my opinion and I did that at the lid but also at the pot of course and then the sugar jar is almost finished the last thing that I need to do is trim the bottom I also made a hole in the other one I didn't record it because it was so stressful but I just want to show you real quick that it does look quite nice and then it's time to just trim the pot like I normally do I prefer to just do this after cutting it open because then you can easily put it upside down and here I'm just trimming it just like I did with the bowl I first smooth out the bottom make sure it's flat and then cut away some clay from the sides and also make a food ring at the bottom and in the end I just smooth it out and I did say with this other sugar jar and then both of the sugar jars were finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire hi 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 it is still the same day I'm doing a lot um, as you can see it's already getting dark outside but I just need to keep going because we need to finish everything that has dried as you remember from I think it was two days ago I'm not sure I don't really keep track of the days anymore I don't really know what day it is today but <laughs> I'm going to finish this one because this one finally dried oh it's a little bit yes okay okay that went well it bent a little bit so it's still a little bit soft but it's like hard enough to finish the rim here so I'm going to use this clay shredder it's called I think I think it's from mud tools yes it's from mud tools and I just use this to go over the rim here and to just cut off a little bit because I cut this with a knife and then you have like two sharp edges on both sides at the part where it goes and with this I just around that quite easily 
Then it's not smooth, but it does like make it rounder. And then after this, I will go over it with a sponge. So just like this, I go slowly over it. And just I just move with the flow of the piece itself. Okay, that looks nice. And then I like to use a big brush like this. It's like very soft and I just like to use that to get rid of all of the pieces of clay that are on the inside. Yeah, you can't really grab them. And otherwise it scratches quite easily. Like the clay scratches quite easily if you like try to take this out with something else. So I really like how this works with a brush. Yeah, little tip for you guys. <laughs> and then we go in with a wet sponge to just smooth it out. <laughs> My whole studio at the moment, as you can see, like things are standing all around me because I've just my whole studio is filled with things that are drying. Like I've plates on the ground, and here are like balls, more plates, mugs, the cake stand parts, and the sugar jars. Yeah, it's a lot going on, but I I've really been enjoying this month so far. Yeah, it's really nice to just make something for myself and also to make a big set like that everything that like fits together. But yeah, I really can't wait to see everything glazed and on the table and then eventually even be used by my friends. I think that's going to be really nice. So I'm looking forward to that. But this went quite well. Sometimes there's a bit of a deeper scratch, then I just go over it for a bit longer. And then it's all nice and smooth. And you know, because it's like a flowing shape and it's just out of the hand, I feel like it doesn't have to be perfect. Really enough, I'm very perfectionistic when it comes to throwing, but when I'm hand building, I'm just like, well, it's hand built, so it doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> for some reason. I mean, you can, of course, make things perfect when hand building, but I also feel like the forms are just a bit more organic or whatever you call it. And yeah, with throwing, I just want everything to be perfectly centered, perfectly straight, perfectly everything. But with hand building, I feel like I'm a little bit looser with that, so that's nice. But I still prefer throwing over hand building. But you know, a little project here and there doesn't do any harm, right? This thing's finished, and I kind of want to put it on top of the foot of the cake stand to just see how it looks. Like it did bend a little bit, so I hope it won't collapse when doing that. If it does, I might just cry, I don't know. <laughs> That looks stunning, honestly, that looks good. Not gonna lie, I'm very happy with that. Oh, I have my strings inside my shirt. Does that look weird? I don't know. I had that, them inside of my shirt because I was trimming and they were like hanging in the way. But this looks gorgeous. So I will make two more of these. I just wanted to first finish this one to see if it would work out and then make two other ones instead of making three ones and then maybe failing. And I think I will make one a little bit smaller because then it can easier fit into the kiln, I think, because firing everything is going to be a problem. With the biscuit fire, I can just stack them on top of each other, because then there's no glaze in between and they won't melt together. But with the glaze fire, they're going to take up a lot of space. So, um, yeah, like this one does not fit in the middle of my kiln, but only at the top shelf, because in the middle of the kiln, I have like the little kiln furniture standing around it so that I could put another level on top of it. And with the top layer, you don't have that. But yeah, I'm very happy that it uh, looks like this. And then I also, of course, have to throw two more food thingies. <laughs> so Tuesday is always the day of the week that I take off. Oh my bird. Mm. Meet Edith. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I think we do have to keep an eye on the phone because sometimes it falls off. Oh. <laughs> Also is is a great mold to make blades. I just let it become what it becomes. 